guys, what's up? Sherry here from No Effects Giving Crew. What's up? Sherry here. So this is going to be a twin flame reading for April 28th until May the 5th. Um, thank you so much for your love and support while I've been gone. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. All right, guys, here we go. Let's start. Um, so I'm using my deck, uh, the typical twin flame reading. Let me pull the cards first, and then I'll go through the positions. So we're doing the basic reading first. Um, if you want to watch the extended version of this reading, you can purchase it on my website or uh, become a patron. And the links are below. And thank you also for the your pledges. Oh my god, guys, you just rock my world. There's just no words to describe how grateful I am to have you supporting me and guiding me also um, on this journey. Okay, so the bottom of the deck. All right, so I might be pulling a couple of clarifiers, so let me just shuffle my other deck here. Okay. So beginning with the feminines, past position, I just want to make sure all the, pit, the cards are on camera. Yeah, okay. So the feminine's past position, the king of earth. Uh, so the king of pentacles is somebody who's very stable, very grounded. Um, they're all about the family, creating a secure, safe environment. Um, you know, it's a feeling that you don't have to worry about money. Somebody's got your back. Somebody wants... Uh, to provide for you for your future right so it's a very successful grounded safe um, you know like a, a homey energy to it so this is coming in the past so I just want to pull a clarifier to see if this is a person so this could be an earth sign or this could be the masculine energy or it could be the feminine the four of pentacles okay so this is somebody holding on too tightly or being closed off in 3D. So, you know, it's a protective mechanism. It's somebody who doesn't want to change their mind, their point of view. They're, they're very set in their ways. So this could very well be the feminine. I'm kind of picking this up. You know, it's like she is very grounded. She can look after herself. Um, she has abundance coming into her life and she but yet she's closed off in the 3d um, she's not willing to share herself and like I said it could be the masculine energy as well coming up across this hard shell of a person so the past position for it the masculine is the crown chakra so the crown chakra is illumination right it's your higher self activated and so it also represents your connection to source, to your twin, to the collective. So the masculine has had an awakening. Um, he has connected with his higher self. He's, he's um, come to some higher understanding of his purpose on, on this earth and, and, you know, how everything out there is just an illusion what is real is what's inside of you your soul right so let's see let's pull one card okay so the three of pentacles um over here is the four with the king we got the three over here which is uh foundation feeling secure feeling grounded feeling like you know your your venture is starting to take off um seeing the success of all of your hard work and seeing that initial fruits of your labor. So that coupled with the crown chakra is telling me that there is something that's beginning in the 3D reality. He feels that um, 
he's now creating a different 3D reality, one that is more aligned with his higher self, perhaps. Let's see what the rest of the cards show. Okay, so the feminine's present position, the Six of Cups. So this card is about reunions, um, but it's also about nostalgia, thinking back about someone, um, having fond memories of them, you know, desiring to reconnect with somebody that you have deep emotions for. And this also represents innocence, right? So when you're a child, you love freely. There's no attachments, right? Um, you're not thinking of getting married. You're just thinking about how happy you are with somebody and how they make you feel, right? And so all you want to do is play and laugh and explore. So let's pull one card. All right, so the Yang, she desires to reconnect with the Divine Masculine. Now, this could also be the feminine embodying this Yang of power, of strength, of determination, of action. Um, but I really see this more of a reflection, a desire to reconnect. Um, and But here we're seeing that the feminine sees the masculine as a divine being, of, of somebody who um, is authentic, right? Those memories she feels are authentic um, and draw her closer to her divine self, maybe, her divine path. Okay, so the masculine's present position, let me move these over as well, okay, um, is the Queen of Cups. So this could represent a water sign. Um, so it, if, it, if it isn't the feminine um, or a water sign, it represents the masculine being in this energy of um, intuitive knowing, of connecting with, at the heart, feeling emotional, feeling a bit guarded, um, fragile. Um, this is somebody who loves very deeply. And um, yeah, so, you know, there's this intuitive psychic ability that goes with it. So I'm looking at that crown chakra and I'm seeing this emotional connection rising from an, an intuitive knowing. So let's just pull one more card. Okay, Seven of Cups. So what I'm seeing here is a desire to connect on an emotional level, possibly with a water sign or the feminine. Um, but he doesn't know how to get there. He doesn't know how to arrive at this place. Um, you know, the message to this card is follow your heart. So there's decisions that are being made. Um, and uh, some confusion, emotional confusion. The near future for the feminine, seven of wands. So this is having the courage and the strength to speak up, speak your mind, um, overcome challenges. Anything standing in your way, you, you conquer that um, and you hold your ground. And this is all about never giving up, never surrendering. So um, I see a lot of powerful energy in that yang arising and then kind of exploding out. The Fool card. So this is taking a leap of faith. Um, this is having no attachments. It's a return to purity, to innocence. That seems to be a theme on the feminine side. This, this um, unchaining Right? You can't um, chain down the yang energy. It is free soul. Um, so the near future, we see this leap of faith, this taking a chance or this movement towards a, you know, a future, but not knowing where that's going to lead you. you know? So finding the power to release yourself from something or to say something and this is like that ignition, that release to become powerful, to overcome, right? Um, to go for it is what I'm kind of feeling here. Can you see those? All right. So the near future for the masculine, the four of cups. 
So this is a disconnect feeling like things aren't moving forward or this could be turning your back on somebody. Um, but there is a longing energy. You're looking out a window. You're thinking about the past. You're thinking about a person. So we see that thinking about in the present position as well, right? Um, you know, wanting to reconnect or not wanting to connect. Feeling that you've been betrayed on some level. So let's see what that's about. The King of Swords. So this could represent an air sign or could be somebody who um, is very authoritar authoritarian, very outspoken. Their words could be cutting. This is making a decision as well. So the near future, I see this um, disconnect. Uh, and you know, it's coming from a mental space and an emotional space. It's like, yeah, there's something that needs to be said, but it's not being said. Remember that the Four of Cups is the the main card, right? So it, I'm seeing this cold as ice energy coming from that card. M moving from somebody who was emotional to, to somebody who is distant and cold, cut off. So we're, we're definitely seeing a regression here. Illumination, feeling like grounded, right? And then confusion regarding an emotional connection and then a disconnect. Yeah, so, uh, confusion to clarity of disconnect, you know, ice king. Okay, so let's leave the final come for later. We'll move into the Union. So at the foundation we have the Page of Pentacles. So this is um, making a commitment to going after a goal, to, to you know, um, there's a lot of work that's required in order to, to create or to make it to that long-term goal. So this is committing to that. It's understanding the long haul, um, but moving forward, right? And so this is either going back to school, starting a new job, but there's a new beginning in the 3D reality. So this was coming in in the past. So we can see, you know, this sense of stability, uh, growth, but being closed off, it's almost like they're working on their own future um, and there was a commitment there. There was illumination there. And then, yeah, I don't know. Well, let's see what, let's pull some clarifiers for that. So one card each, I think. Okay, so the Seven of Pentacles and the Knight of Swords. So the, the masculine's energy was very chaotic all over the place, right? There's the sense of wanting to go forward and, um, having no direction um, you know this is somebody who is also a social butterfly who is a thrill seeker so very all over the place kind of energy associated with the page of Pentacles so it's almost like he's looking at this commitment and not committing to it not it's almost like an avoidance that I'm seeing here. And so the knight kind of turns into the king in the near future. Now the seven of pentacles is what the feminine's getting. And she's sitting there patiently and contemplating and considering the past, considering the future, um, seeing where her time is best spent, right? So there's um, an idea of, of a future goal and although we're seeing commitment with the feminine, we're not really seeing that with the masculine. We're seeing scattered energy, but there's that idea that is this, that's there. It's forming, right? And we can see it kind of grounding in the past. All right, so what is the crowning is the Nine of Wands. So this is uh, somebody who needs to continue to fight, to not give up, right? We got this energy of, 
of conquering something, overcoming something, stepping into your power. Um, and as a crowning energy, there's a desire to push further. Um, I see frustration, anger, a desire to give up and walk away, but also a desire to push further. So one card each. The Page of Wands and the Moon. So the Moon is not knowing something. Something's being kept from you. There's something you want to discover. Um, you know, this is your fears locked beneath the surface. So the masculine is dealing with some darkness. Um, he wants to push through that darkness. He wants to, to fight, you know, to get to the finish line. Um, but at the same time, there's a sense that, you know, maybe he wants to give up because of the fight. There's just too much that's unknown, too many fears that um, are taking over. The Page of Wands is a new beginning. Again, another page. we got a page of the, the foundation of, uh, and a page in the crowning. So, you know, this is excitement, exhilaration, um, this spark, this idea. Um, that has to do either with spirituality or a creative idea, right? So the feminine, you know, is, she's, she feels like she's coming to the end of a journey um, and that there's a new beginning in sight. So we see this fool coming in in the near future, coupled with this powering card, you know, standing up, never giving up, never surrendering, um, overcoming obstacles, but in this free spirit manner, and then we kind of have that same energy being projected here as well. So, you know, needing to battle, needing to fight for something, but there's this new beginning, this innocence, this freedom that's uh, the feminine's reflecting. So, very different energies coming from both sides here. Okay, so what is the feminine bringing into union? The Eight of Wands, a lot of fire energy over here. So the Eight of Wands could represent communication, but it's uplifting energy. It is stepping on the gas, right? Seeing that finish line and moving forward at, at an accelerated pace. But it's also Cupid's arrows. Um, very positive, vibrant energy. We can see that definitely over here. Moving from a closed off space to a freeing space. The Six of Pentacles, so this is um, being open and receptive and generous in the 3D reality, sharing of yourself, um, helping somebody because you can, uh, not because you have to, um, creating safety, um, you know, and it's kind of reflecting over here where, where you had a lot to give, but you're being closed off. But in terms of the union, we have this openness and this willingness to share of yourself in a very positive way. The masculine is the chariot movement, an emotional movement towards your goal. It is overcoming challenges, obstacles, um, feeling excited and happy with what you're doing. Um, yeah, so it's activation and movement forward in a very confident way. Wow, the King of Wands, very powerful card. Um, you know, there's somebody who's a leader, unchained, but this is somebody who takes action. He wants to change the world. So in terms of the union, there's movement forward and there's fiery, passionate, sexual energy a drive, a desire. Okay, so let's leave this for later. Um, so let's move to the final outcome for the feminine. Wow, the King of, or the Knight of Swords, the same card that's coming in down here. The masculine was bringing that in. So as a final outcome, this is a scattered energy. 
This is um, somebody who comes in very quickly and makes sudden changes and then leaves just as quickly. So this is somebody who's unchained, so let's put one card. Okay, so the Nine of Cups is the wish granted, wish fulfilled. So it's an emotional card, feeling um, content with life, feeling excited and happy about your future, right, and celebrating that. Um, could be a social engagement. So because the masculine is bringing in this Knight of Swords from the past, it's coming towards her again in the future. So, you know, there could be an energetic connection. You know, somebody, the masculine, could make a connection with the feminine that is very light, very butterfly like, you know what I mean? Like a social butterfly, you can't hold on to him. He comes in, he makes you happy, you feel like um, things are you know, finally coming together, but remember that this card is somebody who is unchained, um, hold, hard to hold on to. But at the same time, it also means that this person loves to sit down and talk. They're willing to talk about anything, philosophy, um, Im not necessarily emotions, but, you know, big ideas physics, that kind of thing, but um, he wants to dive deep into communication. So there may be something, you know, some form of communication or energy coming towards the feminine that makes her feel like, you know, she's on top of the world. The masculine, the nine of swords. So we got nines <clears throat> as final outcomes. So nine of swords is, um, you know, being trapped in the mind. Um, being consumed with negative thoughts. So, you know, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. There was a disconnect, a turning away because of thoughts. He didn't want to think about um, how he felt about this person. You know, it's like an avoidance, right? And so that cascaded into the Nine of Swords. So let's pull on the card. Ace of Swords. Okay, so the Nine plus the Ace is a Ten, so it's like a completion. So, there is a decision that's made, there's clarity, uh, there's an ending to a fear cycle. Remember we have this moon up here in a crowning, there's a desire to, to face your fears, to find the truth of the matter, right? Um, so the King of Swords is holding that Ace of Swords um, and putting an end to the dark night of the soul. This is a triumphant card, success. Um, yeah, so he discovers a truth. He overcomes or conquers his fears. Oops. I should I just left that? Okay, so, um, the heart of the matter is, aw, the page of cups. Wow, three pages. So the page is another new beginning. So this is the beginning of a love relationship. So this is a muse. Um, so it's a feeling. It's being in that love bubble, right? Um, desiring to draw someone towards you in a seductive way or with loving messages or poetry, right? Just um, childlike, innocent, free, loving energy, right? Very... Um, very flirty type of feeling here. So one card each. Eight of Pentacles and the Knight of Wands. Okay, so remember in terms of the union, the masculine is bringing the King of Wands. Very fiery, very passionate, very driven. Now the Knight is movement forward towards that new connection, that, that desire to connect on emotional level. So he's bringing in uh, directed energy um, like an arrow that's on fire, right? It's towards that goal. There's no stopping him. Um, the feminine is actually bringing in a very grounded energy. The Eight of, of Pentacles is, is positive movement forward in the 3D reality. So I see a structure, a foundation is growing because of this openness with the Six of Pentacles. Um, she was closed off. She's now open. Um, and an expansion of that opening happens in the near future. Um, 
And, you know, it's like that spark of inspiration is reignited within her. The passion, the desire to, to begin a new journey is there, and it's solidified um, in terms of the union for this next week. So the masculine got the chariot and the knight of fire. That's very, uh, very fast, very, I'm going after my goal. There's nothing stopping me, especially if he's coming in as the king of, of fire, right? And the feminine over here, there's just a lot of openness, right? And then wish granted at the end. Okay, so the overall energy, wow, the two of cups, spiritual union, Okay, so um, what this screams is spiritual union. Prepare for spiritual union. So connecting with your twin flame, um, recognizing your twin flame, and having that that soul connection, that deep bond re reignited, that you know that true love feeling reignited, and. Like I said, the masculine, there's the movement forward. He's got a knight down here, a knight in the present twice. Um, and it's like a decision to reconnect after a long, a long disconnect. Right? But it's like he has to move through the dark night of the soul. Whereas the feminine, like I said, is opening up. Instead of um, closing herself off, she's being open. Um, and thinking about the masculine in positive ways, and as a result, that energy comes to her as a knight in the future. Okay, so let me pull, I'm gonna actually use the Osho Zen for the um, message from the universe. What final messages, whoa, do you have this one for the feminine? Wow, the Page of Cups, understanding. And for the masculine, final messages do you have for the masculine? Nothingness. Interesting. So that would be the Hierophant or the High Priest, Major Arcana. All right. So let me read the feminine first. Oops. I just saw it there. So this is like finding encouragement to come out of your cage and that's what I'm seeing this closed offness to openness a return to this free spirit okay so I got a I got new lighting as you guys can see I just wanted to see what it would look like on camera um, I won't know what it really looks like until I do a playback back but um, I don't know we'll, we'll see if I keep it or not but it makes it hard for me to read though. Okay, so it says, um, you're coming out of jail, out of the cage. Sorry, I might have to put this card down. Okay, here we go. You're coming out of jail, out of the cage. You can open your wings and the whole sky is yours. All the stars and the moon and the, so the sun belong to you. You can disappear into the blueness of the beyond. Just uh, drop, just drop clinging to this cage. Move out of the cage and the whole sky is yours. Open your wings and fly across the sun like an eagle. Um, in the inner sky, in the inner world, freedom is the highest value. Everything else is secondary, even blissfulness, ecstasy. There are thousands of flowers, uncountable, but they all become possible in the climate of freedom. Wow. Okay. So that's what I'm feeling here, this openness, this willing to share, this accelerated, um, beautiful energy. And so the universe is telling you to come out of your cage, to be free, fly like the bird, the baby bird taking flight for the first time. So the masculine got no thingness. So I'm not going to hold it up for you. It's just a card with a black background. Buddha has chosen one of the 
really very uh, potential. Oh my God. Okay, I'm actually going to read the other side. I'm having trouble seeing this one. Okay, being in the gap can be disorienting and even scary. Nothing to hold on to, no sense of direction, not even a hint of what choices and possibilities might lie ahead. But it was just this state of pure potential that existed before the universe was created. All you do now is to relax into the nothingness, fall into the silence between the words, watch the gap between the outgoing and incoming br breath, and treasure each empty moment of the experience. Something sacred is about to be born. Wow, okay, so fall into the gap, fall into nothingness. Right, and so that's kind of what I'm seeing here with the Nine of Swords to the Ace of Swords. It's, you know, this Ace of Swords represents pure consciousness, awareness. Um, and so I see this as falling into the gap, into the spaces between thoughts. Right, and you kind of see this as well here with the King of Swords. Um, that disconnecting energy falling into the gap, into stillness. Uh, here again confusion right so it the universe is asking you to return back to the basics to consciousness to illumination and there you will find the answers that you're seeking there you will find that peace okay so I'm going to stop the video there and prepare to do the um, extended reading All right cheers Guys, welcome back. So this is going to be the extended part of the reading. So I'm going to pull uh, two additional cards per position. So we already got the present positions pulled for all of the cards. So I'll pull a past and a future as well. So I'm using my other small deck here. All right. So beginning with the feminine. So we have this king of, of uh, pentacles coupled with the four of pentacles. So let's pull a past position. The Four of Cups in the future is a Four Swords. So two Fours with a Five closed off energy in the, in the middle. So what I'm seeing here, especially with the, um, the Four of Cups coming over on this side with the masculine, um, the, this could be the masculine energy, all being a very prominent point in the feminine's past. So we got a disconnect with the Four of Cups, an emotional disconnect, feeling space between uh, the Four of Pentacles being closed off in the 3D reality. The Four of Swords is somebody disconnecting um, mentally. So we got emotional, physical, and mental disconnect. Now this card in the future is um, a healing card. So where there was stability, we see um, a, you know, a ripping disconnect almost and solitude. Now this could be the feminine finding groundedness within herself and not being pulled and pushed in different directions um, emotionally, physically, and mentally. Okay, so the masculine side. So we got the Three of Pentacles. That, wow, the King of Pentacles. Again, and Five of Swords. So we got the King of Pentacles twice coming in the past. Alright, so the masculine projecting this grounded energy, this um, sense of providing a safe foundation, home, secure environment that's coming from an illuminated place. But in the future, we got the Five of Swords, projection, uh, negative energy, judgment, pushing buttons, right? So this could be the masculine because we, we got a finger pointing at the feminine, and then over here the feminine kind of being closed off and retreating in the future. So there is 
um, a sense that this feeling of safety isn't is is shaken is um, disrupted. Okay, so the present position for the feminine past first is wow the seven of cups and the nine of cups. So seven of cups both coming in the present position here. Um, you know, it's cut, this one's coming in from the past. So there's confusion, seven of cups, not knowing how to get home, knowing what you want, um, having a lot of options, right, confusion. And so there's a lot of being up in the, the mind, thinking about the past here. Uh, the, you know, thinking about the masculine, wanting to reconnect, being confused about it. But the nine of cups is coming in the future twice. So there's a synchronicity. Your wishes and dreams come true. Okay, so masculine's present. So the heart chakra and the page of swords. So heart chakra, we got that emotional, um, true love kind of feeling here, unconditional love. Um, both in the past, we have the crown chakra and heart chakra activated with the masculine. So there's a recognition of a twin flame connection, and there may be a, um, a button pushing in order to, you know, self-sabotage yourself. And I'm seeing silly games here, especially with the page of swords in the future, another page. So the Page of Swords is somebody who is childish, who says childish things, things that are off the top of his head, things that you don't really consider, right? So, um, yeah, I just see this, you know, you're not dealing with your emotional shit in a very mature manner. In fact, in the near future, you end up um, cutting yourself off emotionally. Okay, so the near future for the feminine. Wow, the king of swords. A lot of synchronicities here. And the sacral chakra. So the king of swords, both coming in the near future. So the king of swords could represent an air sign. So we see this making a decision, having mental clarity about a situation, and taking a leap of faith, having power and courage to, to either communicate or to walk away from something that is emotionally disconnected, right? The King of Swords is somebody who is an ice king who um, doesn't use his emotions to, um, you know, he's not controlled by his emotions. So here we have the ice king turning his back and the feminine um, moving in the other direction. You know, there's this conflict, this, this speaking out and then a movement towards the future, right? Saying what you need to say, having that mental clarity and ability to communicate your truth and then taking a leap of faith with the, uh, towards the emotional card. So this is, you know, the nine of cups coming in the future. Um, so there's this emotional activation. The sacral chakra is where your emotions are stored, right? So it's like you are being guided towards um, an emotional experience is what I'm feeling here. You're going to pursue something that will make you emotionally um, feel emotionally connected or open. Near future for the masculine, the Queen of Swords, and the Page of Cups. Weird. Okay, so the King, Queen of Swords past position. So we have, you know, the King and Queen of Swords here. So this is very cold relationship, unemotional, cutting words. Um, you know, almost like breaking a bond, karmic relationship. And from that experience, that's where that emotional disconnect is coming from. 
But then in the future, we got the Page of Wands, right? Remember, this is a crowning energy in the future. For the f that's coming from the feminine. So this happy, excited energy comes into the masculine's life, and it's like it breaks through that darkness. Okay, so pull two more cards over here. So the Eight of Wands with the Six of Pentacles, Two of Wands, and the Nine of Pentacles. So Two of Wands is, you know, expansion, walking through that door, being, you know, taking a step on a journey, um, one that will bring spiritual illumination. Will, you know, it's a journey to discover yourself, but it's an expansion of the mind, seeing all the possibilities. And so that expansion set the feminine on a course towards this um, energetic, um, loving vibration. Um, she's sending love and um, abundance out into the universe. And that energy is coming back to her as the Nine of Pentacles in the future. So this is that return, you know, that b abundance flowing into her life in this um, massive way. What you send out, you get back. So we got the six to the nine. And also this eight of wands is also about energy returning to you. What you sent out in the past comes back to you in this beautiful way. Uh, this is also Cupid's arrows. So this is the nine of pentacles is harvest. It's completion. And so we also got the eight of pentacles over here at the heart of the matter, right? So loving messages being sent out, groundedness, um, and then manifestation of that in the future. We got the progression from the eight to the nine. The nine again and the nine again. Okay, one minute. Okay, over for the masculine side. Oop, I should give that a quick shuffle. Okay, so the masculine, the throat chakra, and the knight of cups. Another knight in the future. So the knight of, or sorry, the, the throat chakra is communication. So um, he may have received communication or he may have said something that pr sent him forward um, in a very powerful way towards, in pursuit of this, his desires, his goals. Um, so I see loving communication here, desire to communicate in a very passionate way, in a very um, exciting way. Now the Knight of Cups in the future is um, somebody who's being romantic, who is showing their emotions, who is pursuing the love of their life. Remember the overall energy is the Two of Cups, very romantic, very um, exciting energy here, openness. Pursuing his desires and, you know, going after the love of his life. So, yeah, I see, I see this um, intense message of prepare for union. Okay, so we did the foundation already. Um, where are we? Did we do the near future? Yes, we did. Okay, so final outcome. Right, okay. Uh, so the final outcome is the Knight with the Nine of Cups, Five of Pentacles, and the Five of Wands. So the Five of Pentacles is being disconnected in the past. Yes, we can see that 3D disconnection here. Um, feeling left out in the cold, feeling... Ooh, sounds like there's fireworks going off outside. Oh my God. Wow. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear those? Oh, crazy. Okay, so let's continue on. <laughs> Fireworks, celebration, yeah. So five of pentacles, disconnect and then reconnecting 
um, feeling this emotional satisfaction, excitement, fireworks going off. Now the five of wands, coming, overcoming challenges and obstacles, minor challenges, minor obstacles. Um, I see, I see, you know, something coming in very quickly and then going again. Um, feeling like there's still some things that might be standing in your way, things that you need to overcome. Uh, let yourself out of that cage, right? Okay, so final outcome for the feminine, or the masculine. The moon, seven of swords. So a lot of sword action happening here. The moon again. So the moon is what you want to conquer, you want to overcome, you want to um, fight, right? So that's coming in the past. So there's a sense that you overcome that fear, that dark night of the soul, you, you know, you find your inner light, you feel successful about it, but then the Seven of Swords is in the future, not being able to trust, not being able to trust your thoughts, feeling like somebody's stabbing you in the back. Um, so that's definitely not something we want returning, right? So let me pull one card for that. What is the Seven of Swords, please? A lot of swords on his on the masculine side. Sword. Um, actually, we got you know we got the King of Pentacles, um, cups, uh, sword, and fire. So, pretty much all encompassing energy, but a lot of highlighted sword um, mentality, mental mental stuff going on. The feminine is in an emotional um, power struggle. And, you know, the 3D has an influence on her as well. Okay, so it's like she's trying to find her independence or freedom, but her energy is really scattered. She's creating barriers. Okay, so what do you mean by the Seven of Swords? Obstacles, challenges, same energy being reflected over here. What are the obstacles? One more card. Stay. You know, it's easier to stay where you are instead of facing your challenges. You know, overcoming those obstacles is a major theme, you know, reflected energy over here and here. So what do you want? Is this something that you, you desire? Then go forward with it. Otherwise, walk away. Completely disconnect from this connection. If you're doubting it, if you feel that it's trapping you, if you feel that you've lost sight of this connection, right, um, that it's not for you, then it's time to move on and pursue things that make you happy. You know, and on the masculine side, you, you are ignoring your deepest desires. You're trying to push them away and that's just going to come back to you as more fear, more feeling of, um, you know, like I said, self-fulfilling prophecy. All right, so overcome your fears and move forward in a big way. Okay, so these are going to be the final messages, final, final messages from the universe. What final, final messages do you have? Feminine first, mermaid, mother and child, and Hemadrid Lake. So what fireworks was so random. God. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I'm gonna put this down again, sorry. Please tell me, Mother, what shall I become? Who should I love and and love? Who should I love and love and lose before my life is done? Help me understand, Mother, how to lead my life. I need to know before I go, become a weary wife. A young mermaid child shelters in a calm cove with her mother. 
She is cautious but receptive to the words of the sage advice bestowed upon her. So the meaning is, heed maternal advice. Be attentive to advice from a trusted elder family member. A maternal figure from older generation has, such, has much wisdom to offer when you need it most. Be humble. Now's the time to listen and absorb. You may not hear what you want to hear, but rest assured you will hear what you need to hear. So listen with an open mind and with the assurance that years of experience lie behind the words of wisdom you will receive. Be receptive to many venues. The advice may come in the form of a personal visit, an unexpected call, or any number of forms of communication. While you should be responsive, do not actively pursue this advice. It must come unbidden uh, if it is to be sincere. So that's what I was seeing up here, right? Um, that very scattered energy, communication, or something coming towards the feminine and her disconnecting from it. You know, feeling like this, there's something not right about the situation, um, feeling that there's, there's still this major challenge there, and that's why we get this scattered energy there. Okay, so the masculine is number 32. The lake she looks alluring, home to fairy folk and frogs, yet beneath the plastic glass lies an enchantress in the bog. She drinks her fill of innocence and sups upon your soul, withering your sense of self until her bowels are full. A vulnerable nymph sits, rests, uh, sorry, rests herself beside a mystical lake. It is a beautiful, magical place, and she finds herself drawn into a false sense of security, not knowing what deception is waiting for her below the surface. So the meaning is beware of deception, enchantment. Okay, so we got that deception, enchantment energy, being aware of it, and then that's why he's probably disconnecting emotionally. Um, a female with bad designs will seek to lead you astray when you are most vulnerable. Yeah, I see that vulnerability there. She may be enchanting, but do not allow her to lure you down an improper path. Though you may feel defensive, Defenseless, know that as long as you stay true to yourself, you will not be led astray. Keep your wits about you. The nephrous female in question may not be a stranger. She may be someone you already know, whose goals are at odds with your own. Whether she is a trusted colleague, a long-term acquaintance, or a dazzling new friend, do not be deceived by the glamour of what she proposes. If a situation sounds too good to be true, trust your instinct. It's a deception. Okay, so... Um, you know, this could be a karmic partner coming in, um, you know, saying things that make him feel worthless, um, you know, that he can't trust, that, you know, there is an emotional connection out there that he wants to pursue, but he feels um, he doesn't have the mental ability to act actively pursue it. You know, so the message from the universe earlier was nothingness, a return to that space, to that, that peaceful state of nothingness. And there you will find the clarity, you will have that, those answers, you will know what, what is true and what isn't. So we see this feeling of somebody coming towards um, both aspects, um, give, you know, getting or receiving advice and not knowing whether or not they can trust that advice. But overall, you know, the message is to be open, right? And if you are open, that, that true love will come, will find you, will come to you, right? You shouldn't be chasing after somebody. Um, they should want to be in your life. All right, so I do hope this helps. I'm sending you guys massive love. Cheers.